Hey guys, and welcome to yet another addition to the Get Started series, a series of videos in which we cover talents, Azerite traits, how to deal damage, and all of the information you need to get started. In this episode, we're going to be covering Marksmanship Hunter. All of the information in this guide has been given to us by Dishio, who is a seven times rank one tournament competing hunter, whose recent tournament appearance saw him take home the AWC Spring Final Trophy. He is considered to be one of, if not the best hunter in the world. As always, let's begin with talents. Here are what your talents should look like by default for Arena as Marksman. However, we're going to delve into more detail on each talent choice and why we've come to that conclusion. On the first row, we have the choice between Master Marksman, Serpent Sting, and a Murder of Crows. Master Marksman makes it so that your aim shot has a 100% chance to make your next arcane shot or multi shot cost no focus. This is by no means bad, but compared to the other two options on this row, offer less consistent damage than Serpent Sting and less burst than a Murder of Crows, so it doesn't really have a place in Arena. Serpent Sting is a poison shot that deals some damage instantly and applies a dot that ticks for 12 seconds. This offers you a little more consistent and spread pressure. However, that's not what Marksman is all about. Marksman is more suited to burst damage. A Murder of Crows is your default here. It gives you great single target damage boost on a one minute cooldown and can easily be applied once you land a trap on an enemy healer, giving you some added pressure. The next row we have Careful Aim, Volley and Explosive Shot. Careful Aim gives your aim shots the ability to deal 100% bonus damage if your target is either above 80% health or below 20% health. This is multifunctional. It allows you to prep an enemy and then push for a trap and also functions well as an execute. This should be your default talent in this row as it offers way more single target damage than the other two options which we will cover now. Volley is primarily focused around AoE Cleave for PvE, offering very little in terms of damage for PvP, in general as it requires your targets to be stacked within 8 yards. This can also cause you more trouble as it procs off your auto attacks, meaning if the target you are focusing is close to your trap target, you can break your own trap without any, having any control over it. Explosive Shot is some AoE burst damage on a 30 second cooldown. It's also a targeted ability and requires you to be facing the correct way and also gives the enemy a chance to avoid it. This doesn't really have a place in Arena, but however can be considered over careful aim when playing rated or non-rated battlegrounds. Up next are the utility talents. We have the choice between Trial Blazer, Natural Mending and Camouflage. Trial Blazer gives you a 30% movement speed whenever you haven't been attacked for 3 seconds. This shouldn't ever be taken for Arena, as even a single dot will take it off. However, for Rated Battlegrounds it has a place to move around the map faster if required. Natural Mending should be the default choice here, as it allows you to reduce the cooldown of your exhilaration when spending focus, giving you a little extra healing over the course of a game. Camouflage can be taken when playing certain compositions like with a Rogue or Feral, as this will help ensure you get the perfect opener. Camouflage can also be taken in Battlegrounds to move around the map in stealth. On the level 60 row, we have Steady Focus, Streamline and Hunter's Mark. Steady Focus makes our Steady Shot reduce the cast time of the next Steady Shot, stacking up to two times. However, you are unable to use any other shots during this time. This has no place in PvP and is used as a tool in PvE to quickly gain focus back, something we don't really require in Arena. Streamline should be your default talent here. When compared to the other two, it offers far more in terms of damage as it synergizes well with Rapid Fire, providing you some more burst. Hunter's Mark simply buffs your damage by 5% onto that one target. This is fine in theory, but Marksman is heavy, heavily focused around bursting during crowd control windows, so the more consistent damage is weaker when compared to the burst provided by Streamline. Up next 
are more utility talents. Born to be wild, post haste and bind and shot. Born to be wild should almost never be taken as games are often short and 20% cooldown reduction on cheetah and turtle is often not worth it compared to the value that other two talents provide. Post haste should be your default here. It's multi-purpose and it allows you the ability to easily kite melee and escape routes as you clear all movement impairing effects. Also with the 50% speed increase you can easily escape or use it to help land traps. Binding Shot is now an AoE route instead of a stun. This can be considered when you don't need the extra mobility from post haste but you need more pills for other members of your team. Such as when facing compositions that train your healer you can root the DPS off them allowing them to escape or even use this as a tool to help land traps. For the next talents we have Lethal Shots, Barrage or Double Tap. Lethal Shots gives your Steady Shot a 25% chance to cause your next aimed or rapid fire to be a guaranteed critical strike. This at first glance may seem like a good choice, however, when you factor in that damage done by critical strikes in PvP is reduced by 50%. This means this talent loses a lot of value and should thus never be taken. Up next is Barrage. This is again an AoE PvE primarily focused talent, used to deal damage to high amount of mobs in dungeons or raids, so can't really be considered for PvP outside of maybe battlegrounds. Last up for this row is Double Tap. This is our default talent for this row and should be taken in every situation. It provides good on demand burst which is what Marksman is all about. This talent also synergizes well with a murder of crows as both line up on a 1 minute cooldown. On the final row we have call in the shots, lock and load and piercing shot. Calling the shots makes it so arcane shots or multi shots cast reduce the cooldown of true shot by 2.5%. Talents like this are primarily focused around PvE and offer a high return in damage when you are freely able to do your rotation. This is often not the case in arena so talents like this one lose a lot of value. Also games are often short so again this talent should never be selected for PvP. Lock and load is our default talent for this row. It makes your auto attacks give you a chance at causing your next aim shot to be instant and cost no focus. This is great for PvP as having the chance at doing some instant seemingly out of nowhere burst can take your enemy easily by surprise and when compared to the other two it's just far more suited to PvP. Piercing Shot is a powerful shot that does some decent damage in a line in front of you. The damage from this is quite weak and there is always the possibility of breaking crowd control depending on your enemy's position. When compared to the RNG burst Lock and Load provides, Piercing Shot is just weaker in every aspect. Now in Battle for Azeroth, honor talents have changed. We have the option to choose between all of the current honor talents and can take any three at a time, as well as a trinket choice. So to start off, let's begin with the trinket choice. Like in Legion, we have the option to choose between Adaptation, Relentless and Gladiator's Medallion. First up is Adaptation. This automatically trinkets you out of the first 5 second or longer crowd control that hits you. This in theory is good as you basically have a trinket on a 1 minute cooldown, but no control over it. However, it can easily be exploited by your opponents as they can see you are playing it, meaning they could potentially bait your trinket and then kill you with all cooldowns in the next setup. Our second choice is Relentless. This is a flat 20% reduction on all crowd control, but you lose any control over your trinket. This can be considered versus compositions with a high amount of crowd control but limited burst or stuns. A great example is Shadow Priest, Mage. They have an abundance of crowd control but limited damage, meaning it's often better to have the reduced duration Relentless offers. Also, Relentless can be very good if you're a human, as you still have access to every man for himself. Last up is Gladiator's Medallion. This makes your 3 minute Honors Medallion a 2 minute cooldown. This should be the default option and taken in most scenarios as it offers you full control over your trinket and the ability to either score a kill or survive. Up next are honor talents. Here you can see all of the honor talents currently available. I've marked ones that would be used often with a green tick. 
situational ones with a question mark, and ones we would never be taken with a red cross. However, there is one other talent that should always be taken, and I'll cover why now. The one talent that should always be taken is Scattershot. This is a 4 second crowd control that will cause the target to remain in a small area and also removes all damage over time effects. This is important for two reasons. First of all, it's an easy way to guarantee you land in your trap without the assistance of anybody else. Secondly, it can function as a pill for your team if you do not require it to land a trap. For instance, you could scatter one target and trap the healer off your, end of your teammate's crowd control for some very effective CC. The next best talent, and one you will take in almost all scenarios, is Roar of Sacrifice. This makes your friendly target of choice immune to critical strikes and also take 20% less damage. This can be used to either help you or a teammate survive and is one of Hunter's best ways to peel for their team. Dragon Scale Armor flat out reduces the damage magical overtime effects deal to you by 20%, meaning this talent is great versus dot heavy compositions like Shadow Play or Boomkin Shadow Priest to name a few. Viper Sting can be taken when you need that extra bit of finishing power. Applying it to healers like Resto Druids when they have no dispel makes it hard for them to remove and opens them up to interrupts. Another great use of this is for teams without a poison dispel, meaning the healer will have to cast or simply suffer a 30% reduction to all their heals. High Explosive Trap can be used effectively on all Z-Axis maps, giving you the ability to knock enemies down to either peel or make it so they have to waste their own time getting back up. This should also be taken in Rated Battlegrounds, on maps where you can take advantage of the terrain. Scorpid Sting can be considered versus very physical heavy melee comps, such as when facing Warriors. It reduces the physical critical strike chance they have by 50%, helping in reducing some of their pressure. Spider Sting can be taken situationally versus Casters if you need an extra defensive. It will silence a target for 4 seconds after casting a spell. Some good examples would be against Frost Mages. When they pop their Frozen Orb, they will look to spam instant damage so Spider Sting will shut them down entirely, meaning they are unable to do any damage. Last up is Survival Tactics. This can be considered versus dot comps which still have some burst, such as Destro Shadow Play for example. You can look to feign death the incoming Chaos Bolt whilst also removing the Shadow Priest damage over time effects in the process, a very multi-purpose talent. Now in Battle for Azeroth we've gained access to some extra traits that buff our abilities in certain ways, called Azerite traits. You can get an Azerite trait on your head, shoulders and chest, and you have a main trait, roll trait and then a defensive trait. The majority of these stack, meaning in most classes it's beneficial to stack the one giving you the utmost damage. For Marksman Hunter, there is currently one main trait that is a little stronger than the rest, and that is Steady Aim. How this trait works is that it will increase the damage of your aim shot on a target every time you steady shot them. This will stack up naturally and assist in what MM does best, and that's strong single target damage. You should look to get this on three pieces of gear if possible. However, if you're unable to get Steady Aim, there are two other traits which are also good, these being Thunderous Blast and Dagger in the Back. Both of these provide a great passive boost to your damage, and are far greater than any other Marksman specific traits we have at our disposal. As for roll traits, there are also a few better than the rest. These are Overwhelming Power and Earthlink, both providing passive increases to your favoured stats. As for defensive traits, keep your eyes peeled for Duck and Cover, and Azerite Fortification. Duck and Cover makes your Feign Death a little stronger and reduces the cooldown by 25 seconds. Azerite Fortification helps you survive stuns that you have a higher chance of getting your defensive cooldown off. But again, focus only on getting the main traits as they provide a biggest damage boost. Now in Battle for Azeroth, once again, stats and gear matter. There is no more templates, so making sure you're going for the correct stats on gear is important in gaining that edge. For Marksman, your current stat priority should look like this. You want to focus mainly on getting the maximum agility, but your two favoured secondary stats are Haste and Mastery, with Versa being a little weaker. Crit is reduced by 50% in PvP, so should be avoided on gear at all costs. As for Enchants, you should be aiming to get Haste on your Rings and Gem with Haste, while aiming to get incendiary ammunition onto your weapon.
The general rotation for marksmen is actually quite simple. You have two main goals, and these are to first of all never cap on aim shot charges, as missing out on aim shots over the course of a game is a huge damage loss, as it's currently your hardest hitting ability. And the other goal is to always use your pierce shot buff before casting the next aim shot. A simple rotation without any cooldowns being used should look like this, making sure to use steady shot to regain focus as required. To burst as marksman, your rotation should look like this. You want to open up with an aim shot to gain the damage buff from not yet engaging with the target. Then pop your true shot to gain an extra charge of aim shot and the extra haste. Then use a murder of crows. Spend your precise shot stacks on arcane shot. Then cast another aim shot. into double tap rapid fire. Finally, finish using any excess arcane shot stacks you have left. But to quickly summarize, always make sure you are using aim shot off cooldown to make sure you are not capping on stacks. Never aim shot twice in a row either, so you don't lose out on precise shot stacks. And always use double tap on rapid fire. Finally, let's cover races. For Alliance, the choice is not so straightforward and different races do well versus different compositions. But the two best races for Alliance are Human, as you still gain a bonus to secondary stats combined with the ability to run Relentless and still have a trinket out of a stun every three minutes via every man for himself. Next up is Dark Iron Dwarf, which instead of the normal damage reduction via stone form, will instead give you some bonus intellect, agility or strength. This can be good for removing dots and then looking to counter pressure. As for Horde, the races are a little more clear cut, with Orc being the only viable choice if you want to gain an edge via your racials. Having access to hardiness, blood fury and the extra pet damage, you can't ask for more from a race. However, if for whatever reason you don't like Orc, Troll can give you a big bonus to your favourite secondary stat, Haste, via Berserkin. That just about wraps up this 8.0 Marksmanship Hunter guide. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed and leave any comments you still may have below.